So uh, we're uh, studying the book of Shmuel Aleph. We are in chapter 28, verse 20. It is the uh, the 15th day of Tammuz. It's a uh, the outside of the Or Chaim Akadosh, uh, very holy Jew, in uh, is buried in Tzfat. Wrote a very famous uh, commentary on uh, on Torah. Um, very uh, very interesting guy. Um, anyway, um, so we're. Um, Let's describe where we are, and it seems like uh, a scene that uh, Harry Potter may have stolen from uh, from the Tanakh, from from the Book of Shmuel. Um, it's uh, dark at night, and uh, there is a uh, uh, there is a king who is uh, dressed up in a costume, literally, so they don't recognize him as a king. Um, he's sitting at a witch's, uh, in a witch's uh, shack, um, and uh, you know it's it's dark, and she's uh, he has two uh, helpers standing guard on, on outside, and she is uh, a, a, a bit of a fraud of a witch because she's uh, usually not successful just making it up. Um, but uh, today she locked out and uh, whatever she did is is working and we'll see in a second how come and what does it mean that she that it works um and she's uh she's bringing a soul a dead soul of uh, the the prophet uh, shmuel uh, and uh, she is apparently seeing him but not hearing him and shaul uh, the king who is asking uh, asked her to bring Shmuel on uh, to to the session in order to consult with him. He is hearing him but not seeing him. It's a very eerie, very weird, um, you know, setup. Now, what led him? What drove uh, Saul? What? What uh, I don't know what this sound is anyway. Um, so what what led uh, Saul to, um, uh, to 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 go consult with the witch with the sorcerer um, is is a whole. Uh, what's I'm I'm, right, I'm I'm sorry I just muted someone who was making noise anyway. Um, is very uh, is very interesting. It's very sad. What's happening is um, King David, who is not a king yet, uh, had to run away from the land of Israel because he was chased and hunted by uh, Saul. Um, he ran away uh, to, to the, uh, one of the arch en enemies of the Jewish people, which was next door to us, uh, the Philistines, who were, in the, generally speaking, in the southwest uh, corner of, of Israel. Um, the area of Gaza, of, of Ashkelon, of, uh, of uh, Kiryat Gat. Um, and he was, um, um, uh, he was uh, basically setting up shop over there. Excuse me, let me just set it up here better. Oh, here you go. He was set, setting up shop over there for, for a longer stay uh, because he couldn't, uh, he couldn't uh, live in the land of Israel, uh, King David. Uh, the Philistines, who uh, in the past two years lost several wars uh, to the Jewish people, two years, two, two years and four months, uh, it's not a long time to lose four wars, you know, that's basically a war every six months or so. Um, and uh, the, the wars that they lost primarily were led by David. Um, David was uh, the one who killed Goliath. And then he helped uh, smite uh, the Philistines several other times. Uh, and now he's out of the country. So that brings a good opportunity to attack the, the Jewish people again. Because they are, uh, you know, the, the, lead, the, the hero, the, 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 the mighty hand that uh, leading the army that has no fear is, is outside of the country, is not uh, participating in wars anymore. And he gave... The king of the Philistines, Achish, he gave him uh, the impression that he is actually going to help him against the Jews. 
um, which is a whole was a whole uh, you know construct of deceit. He was trying to uh, uh, he, he was trying to help the Jewish people from behind enemy lines, uh, but uh, it was uh, he couldn't they, they couldn't know that he's helping them. They couldn't know that he's uh, he's fighting. It was very 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 uh, uh, strange. Uh, and, and very, very uh, tense. Um, anyway, the story is that the Philistines are ready to attack. They chose their um, uh, target carefully. They're not going anymore to the regular target in the uh, center of Israel, near Jerusalem, near, uh, near Bethel, near Shiloh, where the, the, the Bet HaMikdash, the Mishkan is. Uh, where, where it's closer to them physically, geographically, they're going far away, they're going to the north. And they're going to attack the weakest uh, tribe, the tribe of Issachar. Um, so Shaul hears it and right away uh, gather all the, the Jewish troops and, uh, and, and go, um, go up there to the Mount Gilboa in the, in the Galil. Um, and uh, over there he sees the uh, hundreds and thousands and maybe hundreds of thousands of Philistines that are gathering um, and, and uh, ready to, uh, to launch a war. And he gets scared. He gets scared because he doesn't have any guidance, because he doesn't know what to do, because he's, uh, he, he, he feels that the, you know, God is not with him anymore. And um, all of his attempts to get guidance from God um, with the, the breastplates, with, the, with dreams, with the, going to ask the, the prophets, all of that failed, failed miserably. And, um, and therefore, um, he, um, he is resorting to asking a witch, uh, a witch which he outlawed, uh, witchcraft he outlawed just uh, days before that, uh, when uh, Shmuel passed away. And now he's uh, finding himself uh, needing uh, the help of a witch because he couldn't find any holy man to ask him the question. So might as well ask a witch. You know, wouldn't that, you know, if, if, we, if you didn't have Google, you would do exactly the same thing, I assume, um, when you have questions. Anyway, so this is where we are on uh, 2820. So, oh, so not yet. So she's, uh, she's calling Shmuel, and Shmuel finally shows up, uh, upset that she, she got him out of uh, Gan Eden, of where he was. Uh, to show up to talk uh, here, I mean that's not that's not proper to to summon uh, the the soul of a prophet like that using sorcery, um, and uh, he's telling uh, so Shaul says, listen, I need your advice. I'm sorry, I'm calling you. I'm disturbing you from your, you know, uh, uh, rest in peace state. Um, and um, what to do? What should I do with the Philistines? Uh, should I fight? Should I give up? What should I do? It's a it's a matter of life and death. So, so uh, Shmuel telling me, yeah, indeed, it's a, it's a matter of life and death. You're going to die. You and your sons are going to die by tomorrow. Uh, and you should know that you're going to lose the war, and the Jewish people are going to lose the war because you're leading them there, and basically. And uh, so that's, that's it. You know, you, you called me, you troubled, you troubled me, and you asked me those questions, so here's the answer. Have a good day. Um, now, that's not a day that's in the middle of the night. So Shaul is the only one over there who hears those words from Shmuel that's telling him, tomorrow you and your sons are going to be with me in Gan Eden, you know. Um, so Shaul gets totally off, you know, scared. He's scared, he's confused, he's upset, and he needs to do something. And he doesn't really know what he needs to do. He was told to fight, even though he's going to lose. So uh, he has to go, uh, go to have a fight and lose it, and just basically uh, give his uh, give his life like that. Uh, he knows the end result. So one would think that he should just, you know, board a uh, a cheap flight to Europe and get out of town, right? But he, he doesn't do it. Um, so what does he do? So first of all, he stands up. And he starts running and he trips and he falls. And he just fell down. You know, can you imagine, uh, you know, hearing uh, the, the bad news that in less than 24 hours, we're talking actually, it's in the middle of the night in the, 
very late at night, uh, early morning even, uh, and, and the war in those days did not happen at night usually, it, happens, it happened only during the day, and at the end of that day uh, he would be dead. So uh, we're talking about 12 to 16 to 18, mostly 18 hours before, before his, the end of his life. So he stand up and trips and fall, you know, all the way down. And the reason he fell down, falls down is because he got very, very scared. That's one reason. Uh, and another reason, physically he didn't have the strength. Why didn't he have the strength? Because he had a bad day. He had, uh, you know, the day started in the morning in the Mount Gilboa where he's standing and, and seeing, overseeing all of the enemies uh, that are gathering, all of the clouds that are gathering uh, against the, 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 the army or the, his army. Um, and he was busy trying to communicate and ask God, breastplate and all of that. He didn't eat. So, he didn't eat anything. He was so dedicated and so busy trying to figure out what to do that he wasn't able to sit and eat. You know, it happens. Uh, so he was physically very, very weak and, and didn't have the energy. And on top of it, somebody is laying this, uh, uh, this load of brick on him and saying, you're going to be dead very soon in a few hours. Um, so he basically, he, his knees uh, buckled, you know, and he, he fell down. Vatavo, now... Who is this woman? We spoke about it last time. This woman is not a bad woman. She's just, uh, you know, her line of business is, uh, is strange and, and uh, not really profitable, definitely not uh, after sorcery was outlawed. But she's also Shaul's aunt. So she is his aunt. So what the child Shaul, so she heard um, as he as he's uh, trying to stumble outside out of her house, um, which was a small shack, I assume, because she was a, not a wealthy woman. Um, she heard the bump and she sees that Shaul is on the floor. And she saw that he got very scared. Now she don't forget, she brought Shmuel here and she saw him, but she didn't hear him. So he, she still doesn't know what was happening. She was asking the question. She saw Shmuel talking, but she didn't hear what he said. And she <coughs> saw Shaul totally out of kilter. So she told him, I listen to you, Shmuel, Shaul. Um, uh, now, because sorcery, because to, to, to be a witch in those days was illegal, and because Shaul, who was the king, was known to not uh, taking uh, lightly people who doesn't listen to him. Um, and so if he says that something is not allowed, he meant it. And when the, uh, uh, that uh, aunt of his, that, that woman, um, heard that he want her to practice uh, sorcery which was uh, not allowed she said no I don't want to do it and she said don't worry don't worry I, I'll make sure before he even she even knew he is the king and she agreed to take her life in her hands and to help him so now she's telling him now you owe me one I listen to you now you listen to me uh, so she wants, she, now she's turning from this uh, weird witch to his, uh, you know, loving aunt. And, uh, you know, just listen to me and I will give you something to eat. Uh, some vechol and you should just sit and eat uh, the late dinner here, you know. And because you need the strength as you are obviously uh, departing here. Now, still till this moment, uh, Shaul, uh, Shaul does not reveal what Shmuel told him. He just shaken, but you know, and he fell down, and he obviously weak. But he's not revealing it. He will never reveal what was going on, not to make everybody else upset, not to make everybody else run away, because he had information that they're going to lose the fight. How you know he can't reveal this information without the jury, the, you know, all of the soldiers telling him, you know, Zayd Begizun, goodbye. 
So Vayemayen, Vayomar lo chal. And he says, no, he, he, was not, uh, he was not about to sit and feast. A feast and uh, he's not, uh, he, he doesn't want to eat. He, he's had it, you know. He's, he's, a, he's entering the last moments of his life, right? So they're starting begging him. You know, they start begging and say, listen, you, you have to listen to us. You have to eat. You know, you are a leader. We love you, you know. It's you can't just not uh, you can't just not uh, you know fall apart here. You know that we we have a war to to run. We have a country to run. You have a, run, a country to run. We we are coming. Uh, the, the armies are standing uh, face to face. You know what is this? Not eating. You, you have to eat. Now he did not want to reveal why. So he's listening to them. So he listens and he stood up from 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 the ground where he was still on the floor and uh, on the ground and, and he sat on the bed um, and sort of uh, took a breath and, and, and started relaxing. Now that woman, she had uh, happened to have, uh, have a, a, a very a nice size, very fat uh, lamb uh, and, uh, and um, she uh, used it. Uh, Why it's a calf, yeah, it's a, it's a calf, right? Um, it was very, uh, very well fed, and uh, they, they, like, like today, they, they, some of them they keep for, uh, uh, for, for uh, milk, uh, and some of them they, they keep for, they're the making fat for meat. So that was the one that was really big. Um, she could have made a lot of money uh, selling it, but she uh, decided to revive uh, her beloved king, her beloved nephew, who she knew who he was at this point. Um, so she 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 uh, shecht the uh, that calf vatikach kemach vatalash vatofeu matzot. So she um, she took uh, 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 flour and she made the uh, dough. She needed the dough, right? And vatofeu matzot uh, and she baked matzes. Now, when you say to bake in Hebrew, you have to say uh, you have to have a, is missing a letter aleph. Um, Taf Aleph Pei. It's missing a letter. Why is it missing a letter? To tell us that the reason it became matzah is because she was very, very uh, uh, quick. She she needed something fast to revive him. He wasn't about to sit there for three hours till she's, you know, the the, the uh, bread is going to rise. So uh, it became matzah, and she she made it quick for him. She made it, she she served a quick dinner, but it it was you know a nice size royal dinner. But I guess if Neshaul. So, so she uh, um, she gave she served it to Shaul and Rifne Avadav and the two people who are with him. Who were the two people? If you recall, one of the two people was her son. Her son was uh, Avner Bener. Avner Bener was the um, the head of the army for Shaul, uh, and he is the one that uh, knew what his what a mother is uh, busy with, and he was able to uh, get her to help. Uh, Shaul with his questions, even though uh, it was illegal, but he knew that uh, she'll be safe uh, because uh, Shaul is not uh, just going to ask her questions and then kill her. So, um, so that was one of them. And another one was a nephew of David. Very interesting. Um, a, a nephew of David? Yes, a nephew of David. Uh, he was, uh, David was his uncle. His, co- his name was Amasa. Um, now, the reason he was so <coughs> dedicated to Shaul at the time is because his father, his mother is, is, is uh, David's um, sister. Now, David is from the tribe of Judah, as we all know, right? But his father, Yeter, was from the tribe of Benjamin, which is the same tribe of Shaul. And he was going, uh, you know, with the father. The father was uh, from the tribe of Benjamin, so he is basically a Benjaminite. Uh, even though his mother is from Judah. Uh, so he was serving in front of Shaul and was very dedicated to him. Uh, later on, not, for, not long uh, after this event, when he saw what happened to Shaul and how he lost it, and he would leave, Sha- Shaul would die a few hours later, but he would, he would leave the house of Shaul. Uh, Saul's son tried to take over afterwards for a few months and it didn't work, but th- throughout that time, Amasa left them and went to help David. He became uh, loyal to his mother's sides because he saw that his father's sides didn't, didn't do it so well. 
Um, so, so they were now this Amasa and Avner Bener were together with Shaul, um, and um, so when she opened the table, she gave them food as well. So they, um, so they stood up and they and they ate, and they went. Uh, and they went back to the to the camp. They went back to where 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 the fight is. Now a little bit of geography. So they were in Har, Har Gilboa. Har Gilboa, Mount, Mount Gilboa, is um, inland, very much inland, near near Afula, uh, a little south of Afula, uh, nowadays. Um, then as well, it didn't move the mountain. Um, <laughs> And Bengo, <coughs> where that uh, saucer, where that witch was, where that woman was, was all the way on the uh, uh, banks, on, on the beach, uh, on the Mediterranean, right, right on the, uh, uh, right on the water. She had a waterfront uh, view, and um, so to walk over, that's uh, that's not that's not easy. That's not fast. It took several hours to do it. So by the time they got back, it was almost morning. Because they went in the at night, so people won't recognize him, and they were, you know, going all the way to the uh, to, to the, the Mediterranean and going back. So it was morning. Now, um, so that 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 is what happened. Uh, uh, that's what happened to Shaul. Now, at, at this point, we are uh, re rewinding. A uh, couple of days back, okay. We are standing right now at the morning of the the fight, at the morning of the battle, where uh, Shaul is going to lose his life. Um, but now we are we 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 leaving the scene here, and we're going to explain to to talk a little bit about what happened to David throughout the past couple of days, okay. So we are rewinding back two days. And um, and we sort of starting the uh, setting up the scenes. Two days ago, Vaikapsuplishtim, that the Philistines gathered at Kol Machanem, all of their camps, all of their army, Afeka, to the city of Afek, Israel Chonim Ba'in Asher Israel, and the, the Jewish people were were on the bank, uh, on, on the in the in the uh, valley of Israel, in a place called Ain. Now, Mount Tavor is where Shaul went to see, you know, to check the sizes of the army, to see from above, um, you know, the, the two armies, uh, but that's not where the army was. The army was down in the valley. Now, Afek, where is Afek? There were two Afeks. There are still two Afeks in, 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 in Israel. One of them is near Rosh Ha'ayin, close to Ben Gurion Airport, okay, uh, which is far away from where the war was. This is where the last successful war of the Philistines against the Jews happened. And that is where they were able to capture the, um, the, the, um, uh, the Ark of the Covenants, uh, Aron Abrit, with the, uh, you know, when, when they took uh, with, the, with the broken Luchot with us, uh, they took it away from us. Uh, for, so, so they felt that this is a successful place. That's where they were camping. That's one explanation. Uh, somewhat, I guess, more logical explanation is, 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 uh, so is uh, it's an effect which is near Akko, which is way uh, north, north of Haifa, which is much closer to where the action would be, which would make sense to be as a, as a gathering uh, place, um, you know, uh, to prepare for war, which is a few, I don't know, tens of miles away from it, rather than 150 miles away from it. But either way, they were in effect. Now, let's talk a little bit about the structure of the government of the Philistines. The government of the Philistines, traditionally, they had three regions. They had three um, police states, I guess, uh, three, three individual cities, city-states um, that, that had uh, uh, independence of sorts. And together there were the Philistines. So they were the same people, the same tribe, but they were living in, in five states, five cities. 
And those cities, each one would have a seren. Seren is a lieutenant, not a lieutenant, a, a ser, something, whatever. He's a, he's a <coughs> military rank um, that he's, um, you know, he, he, was, uh, he was leading, uh, leading that, uh, that uh, city. But they didn't have a king. Each city did not, what? Captain. Captain. Uh, so they had the, the right, so five captains. The, but they did have in this time they had one king, and that was Achish. Achish is the king of the of, of one section of the Philistines, but he is the the ranking member of the uh, of the five. So when they were marching to the battle, uh, those captains would take their troops. They had you know several troops, several platoons. Uh, so the Sraneplish team. Ovrim uh, lemeot ve'alafim, so they would go ahead, and they, as as they were, the the, the text is, is describing how they gathered all of how they amassed all of the uh, all of the troops, all of the army. So first it was those captains who are going uh, going up from the southern uh, region where they were to the north where the fight was, hundreds and thousands of them, right, which was. Uh, Intimidating. And the king went last. You know, that's traditionally how those armies uh, used to go, that the king would go last to the war. Um, and, and all the, the uh, uh, how do you call it? The salt of tahim, the the cannon, the uh, cannon, the, uh, the cannon, what? Can, right, cannon, whatever. So they, they went, uh, they went uh, forward. Um, so he was, a, 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 he was at the end. Now, with him, with Achish, was David and his people. The 600 people, the militia, that ran away <coughs> with David um, uh, from the land of Israel. Now, why were they together with Achish? Because Achish was his ticket to uh, survival at this point. He ran over there and says, listen, I'm going to help you against the Jews. And just uh, give me, let, let me stay somewhere. So he said, okay, stay with me, no problem. And then he, uh, he gave him a town, he gave him a, a, an area, a town called Siklag, to be in, which is one of the most uh, southern uh, sections, towns in his, uh, in his kingdom of the Philistines. And David was there, and every day David would go with his militia to, uh, to terrorize the, uh, the natives over there, to uh, all of those people who loved us so much and uh, uh, caused us trouble throughout the years. Uh, so David was going one by one and paying back to them and taking, uh, taking their, uh, um, all of their possessions and giving it to Achish. So he, had, uh, he killed two birds in one stone. Achish kept him alive. Kept, kept, kept him around and, and was protecting him. And he was retaliating against the, uh, uh, those uh, other uh, uh, people who would not, uh, you know, who had a whole um, a long rap sheet and a, and a long, uh, 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 you know, accounting with, the, with, with us, like the, the Amalekites, for example. And to Achishi was telling uh, Bobemais a story that he is fighting that all of this booty that he brings is from the Jewish people, that he's actually going and attacking his own people, and these are, and he attacked this town and that town, all kinds of towns that are far away, that it's not likely that Achish will, will have information about, correct information about. So he was running a whole uh, scheme here, but Achish, on account of getting from him so much booty and so much possessions, um, is um, he was very protective of him, he liked him very much, and he promoted him, as he promised, he promoted David to be his uh, head of the guards. So uh, he would, David now is, is guarding with Achish. Now during the, the uh, ensuing uh, uh, fight, David had in mind that during the fight it would be a good time to get rid of some of those uh, uh, Achish and some of those uh, people and to, to help the Jewish people from inside the camp, uh, the, the Philistines camp, you know? But so he positioned himself right in the, in the right place. Anyway, so Achish was very uh, blinded by all of the money that he was getting from David. Every morning David would go 
and in the evening we'll come back with a boatload of uh, stuff and, and give to her, this is what I got today from my, my Jewish uh, brethren that I fought again and again and again for four, four months. It happened, it, it was going on for four whole months. So Achish was, you know, that's his best, uh, his best bank account, you know. It, it, keeps, it keeps getting a lot, a lot, a lot of money from, from this guy. So he trusted him. But the other Philistines were not so enamored with the David. They had longer memory of what David was not long ago, uh, you know. But in Musa Reflishtim, so the, the, all of the other captains, all of the other ministers of the Philistines, who were somewhat subservient to the Sahish guy, they were not kings, they were just captains or ministers, they were lesser, ranked less than, than Achish, but they rebelled against him and says, what about those Jews? You know? Very, very famous question that's being asked again and again and again in history. What about those Jews? And he called them Ivrim. Ivrim is a, it used to be a, a you know, derogatory. What, derogatory term to call the, the Jewish people. Ivrim means those are coming from the other side of the river. Because Avraham Avinu came from the other side of the Euphrates from, from the area of Iraq. So he was called the, from the other sider, you know? So Ivri means the other siders. So who are those people who are coming from, you know, from, the, from far away? What are they doing here in our camp, in our war? Vayomer Achis, so Achis, you know, knowing the strength of David and having dreams that David is going to be his ticket to, to win this war. Vayomer Achis el Saref Lishtim, Alo ze David, oh no, no, so, Aloze David Ebed Shaul Melech Israel. He says, "Oh, of course. What do you mean? This is the David, who was the servant of Shaul, the king of the Jews. who was here for a long time. You know, he, he, he's exaggerating because he was there. He wasn't there years. He was there only four months and ten days or so. Um, and he, but he with me, and he's bringing me all these goodies. Velo matzati bo meuma." From the day that he landed on me, I didn't find any fault in him. He's totally loyal. He is with us. You know, what's wrong? What, what, what's your problem? But they are not stupid. He was blinded, so he, you know, it was easy for him to, to accept that. But they were not. Uh, so, so they got very, very angry at their own king. Um, sound very familiar. And they told him, Send him. They didn't want to kill him. They, you know, they, they realized that there is a, a lot going on here. Send this man away and let him go back to his home. Where you, where you uh, put him uh, in charge of that city of Tziklag. And he should not come with us to the war. Why? Because he is going to be our Satan. He is going to be our enemy in the war. You know, he is not, he is not uh, trustworthy. First he is fighting us and killing Goliath and helping Saul. So he is in bad, in bad relationship with us. Then he is fighting with Saul and he is running to us. So he is not trustworthy, not for us and not for him. You know, he can flip on a dime. He can flip again, and, 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 and now he's helping back his old, his old master. Now that he's had a fight with Saul, what is the best way to, um, to be again on the, the better side of, uh, of Saul? With our heads. You know, our heads are going to be the, uh, the gift, the, the prize that he can... Uh, give uh, back to his uh, master so his master will accept him again we're not going to have a fight we're not going to have this kind of a, a, a fifth column inside in our midst in the middle of the war don't you remember Mr. this is uh, two years ago when two years ago when um, when there was the, the first war with Goliath right when they lost Goliath what was the reaction of the Jewish people, of the Jewish women, after the war? They were dancing, and they were honoring David. They, uh, Saul 
had slain his thousands, but David uh, tens of thousands. So he's very, very, um, you know, he's not our friend. He killed a whole bunch of us, and that's what they were dancing in the streets in his honor. And now you're bringing him in, into to a war here against his old, the people who honored him that way? Makes no sense. So now Achish is in a dilemma. Because he has a very good soldier, he has a very good militia, they are his guards, and but you know his people are his people, and he can't cross them because you know they're not going to take that down. They made it clear, uh, they're not going to take that um, uh, favorably. So David, so he's trying to appease him. He didn't want to reveal to him that there was such an upheaval, such a, a, a strong opposition for his uh, uh, for him, uh, come, you know, participating in the war. So he was trying to tell him that they don't, and I'll just summarize and then we'll read it inside. Um, he was trying to tell him that they just don't like that you are here with me as a, as a uh, head of the guards. So, He says, first of all, he praises him because he doesn't want to lose him. He says that, uh, you know, in the name of God, you are a straight man. And you're a very good man in my eyes. I like you very much. You know, you're coming and going with, uh, with me in this, uh, uh, in this camp. You see, I trust you. I love you. You're the best. I didn't find any, one, one bad thing uh, with you uh, from the day you came. Uh, from the day you came to me until this very day, I didn't find anything bad that you did, however, the captains, they don't like it. Malasot, what can I do? It's not me. So, you know what? Let, let it be, it's no big deal. You can go back home. And now you should go, and, and uh, you should go in peace, and you're not gonna you know, get in on, the, on the bad side of the, of the captains. Now, David was really here struggling because, you know, it's not easy to launch a, a rebellion from within. And he's, uh, you know, on the forefront over there with Achish. So what should he do? He was trying to either get an opportunity to help the Jewish people or at least get an opportunity for Achish to kick him out of the war so he doesn't have to fight against, uh, you know, his brothers, his, you know, Shaul, who is... Uh, he holds in high regards because God uh, elected him to be the leader of the Jewish people. So, you know, David is, is in a dilemma here. And he sort of, aha, he succeeded. God, God maneuvered it that he's going to be sent back home and, and not uh, need to, 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 to fight the war. But David has a problem here because it's not enough for him that he leaves. He wants his 600 men with him. He can be number one. He doesn't want the other 600 people to be... Um, uh, you know, to, to, to fight that uh, war against, against us. A and he didn't want to be separated from them. He didn't want to put them in harm's way. I mean, it's, it's, he, he can't just go alone. So he continues the discussion until he accomplishes that he and his men are being kicked out. Vayomer David. David So David is saying, what did I do? What did you find from the day that I came in front of you until this very day? Even though Achish just told him that there is nothing wrong with him. But he, you know, he, he sort of continued to whine and, and to complain. Why, 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 why me? Why, why are you sending me home? Well, I'm not going to be uh, worthy. I'm not going to come. I'm not going to participate in the war against the, uh, the enemies of the king. Um, so, Vayan uh, Achish, so Achish sort of understands what's going on here. Vayan Achish, Ramar David. So Achish told him, yeah, that, so, so he, he cannot continue the lie to, to tell David that the only problem is that he is, uh, you know, his guard. He's uh, part of the, 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 the royal guard. So Vayan Achish, Ramar David. So now Achish changes the, the story a little bit. Uh, I knew that you are very good in my eyes. You're like an angel. Can you imagine? Um, you're like an angel to me. But 
but the, the Philistine uh, uh, ministers and, and, and captains said, he is not going to fight with us. Oh, now that, he's, that, 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 that he revealed to David what the problem is, the problem applies not only to him, the problem applies also to the 600. If, if he doesn't want you know, Jewish soldiers in his army when he's fighting the Jewish people, it's not only, it's not only David, it's also the 600 people. So Achish is sort of uh, realizing that himself and he's uh, providing an out, an honorable out. Vatash kemba boker. So now wake up early in the morning because it will be, you know, 600 people is a, is a bunch of people. It's not to kick them out. It's um, very easily can turn ugly where they go and all the Philistines are standing uh, along the way. Woo, you know, go home, go home, you know. It's not... Uh, they're not loving, you know, nobody ever loved the, 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 the 600 people, the, the, the Jewish people, even if they seem to be running away. Um, um, so so they, they want, he provide them uh, with a way out. Vatash Kemba book, it says, wake up early in the morning when nobody is seeing. Vavdecha, and also the servant of your master, those who came with you. Vish Kamtemba book, you wake up very early on, and and, and it will be light for you, but only for you. Nobody else will see because it's going to be very, very early on. So you will be able to see your way out, but um, you could sort of disappear. So the Philistines will wake up in the morning and you're not there. Okay. Vayashkem David huva anashaul alechet baboker lashuv alechet plishim u plishim alu Israel. So he, um, so that's what happened. Uh, so the, the, he wakes up in the morning with his people. He sort of accomplished his mission. He didn't want to be put into the test of uh, uh, fighting against his own people. Um, and uh, so here, uh, he, he basically was uh, sent away from the, from, the, from, the, from the war. What happened now is, what happened now is uh, we are joining back, we are joining back the timeline with where, when Shaul finished the the consultation with the witch. Okay, this is the morning of the fight, the morning of the of the uh, uh, of, of, of the battle, and um, uh, now David left and went went back home, and Shaul basically was walking back from the witch's house to the camps of the Jewish people, and we will see. We will continue a little longer with the uh, what happened with David, which is his. Uh, you know his annals uh, throughout uh, the 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 war while the war was being uh, is occurring up north. What happened to him south? Uh, it will come and we'll see a sort of a disaster which he needs to deal with. It will take him a day to to fix it, um, and at that time, Shaul will be fighting up. We are two chapters away from finishing uh, the book of Shmuel Aleph, which is uh, you know. Is, is basically ending with the, uh, the death of, of Saul. And uh, so we will have, I guess, a couple more, uh, uh, one or two more weeks, we'll finish uh, that story, and then we will do a seum, and then we are going to start uh, the book of Shmuel Bet. And the book of Shmuel Bet is basically the, the story of uh, David uh, after he became a king, after the, after the death of Shaul. Now, he didn't become a king right away, but. Um, that's uh, that's where we are. So I think the shul is about to daven. So we'll let them uh, we'll let them daven mincha, and we'll see you next week, same place, same time. Thank you for joining, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.